You know, my wife and I, Irene, who is actually behind the camera, we've been discussing how this pandemic has been affecting people in many different ways. And one of the uh, things that we have discussed is how it has affected marriages. And we've seen both good and bad. We've seen how it has strengthened some couples and then we've seen where it has brought some challenges. So this morning, I just want to share with you some good emotional habits for your marriage that my wife and I have found to be true in our own marriage. And one thing that you need to understand is that no marriage is successful because you and your spouse have, have chemistry or are each other's soulmates it, or because you even have good luck. Your marriage will only be successful if you put in effort to it. She and I have worked uh, side by side for, gosh, I don't know, 25 years or so. And in those 25 years, we've learned a lot about each other and about one another and about our marriage. And one thing that we discovered is that a marriage works when you work at it every day. In other words, you have to make good habits and disciplines central to your relationship with your spouse. And these things that you do on a regular basis, I'm talking about daily, weekly, monthly, are going to predict the, the future of your marriage. And I believe that emotionally healthy couples exhibit five crucial habits. And, and, and I believe that because we have seen it in our own marriage. The first is, and I talked about this last week, is actually praying together and trusting God. You know, when we're mad at our spouse and frustrated within our marriage, the root emotion that we are actually experiencing is actually disappointment. Instead of dwelling, though, on what we don't like about our spouse or our marriage or whatever's going on, you know, that's, a, that's the key that you should stop and let's pray for him or her and ask God to bless them and to bring us closer. We can pray and uh, on our own and together. And that's one of the key points to having a strong marriage. But it's amazing how God will soften our hearts towards each other when we specifically pray for each other. This is also a wonderful example of, of what is called an unconditional love and humility. The two must have attributes to have this strong marriage. Like I've said before, you know, it was several years in our, into our marriage before Irene and I started to pray together. And before this happened, our relationship was filled with conflict and anxiety. That's not to say that conflict and anxiety doesn't try to come into our lives. And, and, but today, when we recognize it, we refuse to let this anxiety into our marriage. And instead, we take it to prayer. Instead of worrying, instead of stressing, it's not to say that we don't do that, but at that moment, we pray together. We hold hands and pray together. We'll sit up at night and talk. And if there's anything going on in our relationship or our family, we pray about it. We make time for it. And this habit has actually changed our marriage and, and produced some positive things in us. You can't help but change when you're in the very presence of God. The second thing that we've discovered is good. The second habit is to Resolve those negative habits or feelings daily. Don't let them linger on because negative feelings like anger aren't sinful in themselves. But the Bible says Jesus got angry. But when you hold on to these feelings and you let them simmer inside of you and you let them simmer because he said or she said this, what they do is they become toxic. You know, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 says, don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let anger control you or be fuel for revenge, not even for a day. You know, today's anger, it's, it's not really a problem, but yesterday's anger is definitely a problem. See, in a good marriage, you have to be able to process these negative feelings. And the sooner that you process them, the sooner you're going to get through them. And, and the one way to do that is you have to talk about your anger. Not, not while you're angry, but you have to talk about it. Give your spouse a right to complain and share what has upset them or hurt their feelings. I think that's one of the things that we fail to do in marriages is actually give that person a safe place to come and talk without interrupting them and actually let them vent in a peaceful way what hurt them. In years of marriage counseling, I have found that the worst marriages are the, are the ones that, where the couples, they don't talk. They want to come and talk to me, which is great. But daily communication between them is a must. You know, we can't expect our relationships to get out of the rut if we don't tell our spouse how we feel. Oh, we'll go tell our friends. We'll go tell everyone. But the one that should hear it 
is a, probably the last one to hear it. And listen, listen is a big thing for us men. We need to listen to our spouse and when, when they share their feelings as well, and women as well. You know, men need to be able to share their feelings with their wife without feeling judged. But we must refuse to shut down, even when every part of us want to. But So instead of retreating to another room in the house, we need to sit down and really talk with one another about everything. But only after we do the first habit that I talked about, and that's praying together. You know, you need to talk about daily stuff. Kids work, but then there needs to be set a time when you, you talk about your hopes, your dreams, your fears, your frustrations, your insecurities. And we must day, do this to stay connected and get back on the same page and build trust. Again, it only happens if you do the first one, which is pray together. The third one, you know what? Have fun together and become best friends. You know, you need to enjoy each other's company and remember how you, you felt when you fell in love uh, at, at the beginning. You talked and you talked and you laughed and you laughed. You spent time with each other and you, you enjoyed spending that time with each other. You know, when couples uh, stop doing these things, they, what they call falling out of love, but one of the best ways for couples to have fun is actually enter into each other's worlds. Learn what they like, not just what you like, I mean, does your husband like to golf or hunt? Maybe you like to play that. You, you like to play golf or you like to hunt. What does your wife does? Or wives, what do you like? Do you like to go to the movies, watch old movies? Uh, you know, whatever it is, husbands, I want to encourage you very much to enter into your wife's world and find out what she likes and participate in that. Then offer to join in whether you're interested in the activity or not. You know, maybe your, life, uh, your wife likes to exercise or to travel. You know, find out because, you know, this, you, what you're doing is saying, you know what, your life is important to me. Because, I mean, after all, when you exchange vows, you were saying, I want to share my life with you and I want you to share your life with me. As I mentioned before, we have a tendency to check out when things get uncomfortable or difficult. So instead of finding reasons to be away from our spouse, we need to spend more time together. Put the kids to bed earlier and then just simply talk. Go for a nightly walk after dinner. Meet up for lunch regularly during the work week because we have to be intentional and actually make time for one another if we want to foster a stronger marriage. The fourth thing is, and that's the one I struggle with, and Irene behind the camera would tell you that's, the, that's probably the one that I have struggled the most with, but I am working on it, and I, uh, I'm actually honest with her, which is be patient with your spouse. You know, we don't get into a marriage rut overnight. So we can't expect to see a drastic reconnection after one day of trying. It takes baby steps day after day after day. And the main thing that we need to remember, though, is that we must refuse to give up on one another. We are choosing to face this for worse season together. Helping each other, leaning on one another every single day. Understanding that, you know, you're imperfect, they're imperfect. So... Be patient because when your imperfectness shows up, you want them to be patient with you at all as well. So finally, build close relationships with other believers, individually and as a couple. See, because your friends are actually your future. See, if you want to know what your marriage will look like in a few years, take a look at your friends' marriages. Because I found that both healthy relationships and bad marriages actually run in packs. Love everyone, but make sure that your closest relationships are with strong believers who will challenge you to be a better Christian. Because it starts there. You become a better Christian, it's going to strengthen the marriage automatically. You know, try to, 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 to form a relationship with couples who will inspire you to start healthy habits in your marriage. You know, research says that it takes about 60 days for a new habit to actually rewire your brain and become an almost involuntary behavior. Which of these habits do you and your spouse need to add to your relationship? That's the question that you need to ask yourself after you watch this video. Ultimately, whatever you add into your marriage, whether it's something positive or something negative, it will produce fruit. So then, the goal should be at, to add good healthy habits into our marriages so that the fruit that is produced is a marriage that's strong, fulfilling, 
and filled with a God's agape love. See, in time, you're going to see and feel the reconnection. But more than anything, God will show us how much stronger that we are together. He will bless us as we honor our marriage vows, and we will have an amazing testimony of endurance, commitment, and love that will inspire those around us, especially our own family. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for every married couple, every couple. I pray for your divine intervention, that you would bind them with cords of love that cannot and will not be broken. Lord, move in their hearts, Lord. And I thank you and I praise you, O God, that, that the testimony that they shall give as they apply these habits shall be for the glory of God to those around them and to their family in Jesus' mighty name. Bring healing and restoration to those places in every heart. I bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again.